got lost and need a word of healing. Let me show you the truth. Now, if you will, if you will, it's time to heal your body, mind, your soul, your spirit. All it takes is an open ear for those who would hear it. The healing of your sin, the washing of the world. Welcome, 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 sisters and brothers. Welcome to another edition of the Bomb of Gilead International Bible Radio Show, presented to you by the Israel of God Bible Study Class, sisters and brothers. We are live again another Thursday. The Lord allow us to be here with you guys. You can be anywhere in the world, but you're right here with us today on Thursday. Sisters and brothers, we have a great lesson planned for you today, sisters and brothers. The Lord allowed one of my favorite teachers to do this lesson, sisters and brothers. My brother, Great. Not only is he a favorite, one of my favorite teachers, he's a great mentor to me, sisters and brothers. Uh, may the Lord allow him to put together this lesson, and it would not be right if we did not do this lesson at this particular time, titled The Lord's Passover, sisters and brothers. The Lord's Passover. And right, the rest of the world is getting ready for Easter, and the rest of these holidays that may have uh, uh, coincided to, sisters and brothers. The Lord have allowed us to be brought to the truth and to find out tonight why we are going to talk about this Passover. So along with me being on the show, brothers and sisters, we have my, my, my good friend, Brother Julius, the co-host. Brother Julius. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another exciting edition of the Bomb of Gilead Bible Radio Show. I am ready to go. I want to welcome all of our worldwide uh Listeners and viewers, we thank the God of Israel for you, those around the world. Um, thank you, and as well as the United States, thank you. Get your uh, pen, paper, and your Bibles. Like, share, and post. Will, I am ready. And so I'd like to introduce you to my, my good friend and teacher, Brother Greg. Hey, good brother. evening. What's going on, guys? Thank you, Brother Julius, for having me on the show. As I always say, this is the greatest radio show in the world and everybody to this day should should thank the god of israel for allowing me to teach you this lesson about the lord's passover now people are always talking about the blood of jesus the blood of jesus this is a lesson so you can understand what the blood of jesus is all about that's so, right brother greg before we get started go ahead. let's start let's read the scripture that starts to Sets the tone for the bomb of Gilead, Isaiah 61st chapter. All then right. we're gonna get we're gonna get right on into the lesson, sisters and brothers. We want you to get your pen and paper because it's very important that you take notes uh, and, and review this lesson when we finish tonight, sisters and brothers. Go back and review this lesson. Go ahead, brother Julius. Go ahead, Isaiah, Julius. Isaiah 61, verses 1, 2, and 3. It reads, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planning of the Lord, that he might be glorified. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his holy word. In Jesus' name, we pray and give thanks. Brother Greg, let's go. And I'm gonna say amen. Amen to that, Julius. The spirit of the Lord is upon us today. So now, 
The Lord has commanded his church to keep the Passover in Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Now, for the life of me, I don't know why every church on the planet is not keeping the Lord's Passover. Everybody talking about they love Jesus, but we're going to read the scripture. It's going to say, hey, how, they, how the Lord had them smitten and all of that. So it don't seem like everybody loved them, and it don't seem like everybody loved him today. He requires man to do something according to his faith. This Passover lamb represents Jesus passing over your sins or passing over all the sins of those that believe. In Exodus, the blood is a test of your faith and your obedience. The Passover was a forerunner to the high priest offering up himself to God as a sacrifice to make an atonement for the sin, for our sins. When sin came in, God required blood to make that atonement. Now, just think about it, y'all. From the from uh, uh, from the time that the Passover was instituted in Exodus 12, we have been waiting for this great offering to be made on our behalf. And after the Lord Jesus came and died, the real blood or the grace covered all that belief. Yes. Our Lord even ate the Passover with his disciples, and he changed the ordinance of the Passover from a feast to the bread and wine. Every year on the 14th day of the first month, we celebrate our Lord's death until he comes. That is what it's all about. He didn't die for you but one time. Sister, this week says she she take the Passover every day. How you going to take it every day? So we're going to start our lesson. We're going to get into it. We're going to start our lesson in Romans 5. We're going to pick it up at verse 12. Brothers and sisters, pay close attention because this is one of the most important feast days of the year because it don't just encompass the offering that was made. It encompasses the uh, uh, Day of Atonement as well. The, the Passover is the offering and the Day of Atonement it was why it was offered. So you got to keep that in your mind. Because this is a very important feast. Pick this up at verse 12. What does it say? Brother Greg, before we yes. go to verse 12, I want to acknowledge uh, Pastor Johnson from Bethel House of God, who is simulcasting this lesson for all the way from Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Welcome to you guys in Jesus' name. Romans 5, you, Romans 5 and 12. Yes, sir. Therefore, as by one man, sin mm -hmm. entered into the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men, for they all have sinned. See, when a man sinned, a man had to remove his sin. The Lord brought the blood of bulls and goats and animals because he loved you and he didn't want to just kill you. But I'm going to show right. you how, them, how that represented the death and the resurrection of our Lord. We're going to go to Isaiah 59, brothers and sisters. Isaiah uh, 59. And we're going to have uh, the brother pick it up at verse 1. Isaiah. Chapter 59, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1, because this is what has happened. We have let sin run roughshod, and that is why we are dying today. That's right. Pick it up at verse uh, verse 1, brother. What does it say? Behold, the Lord's hand is not shortened that it cannot say, mm -hmm. neither is his ear hip heavy that it cannot hear. Go ahead. But your iniquities have separated you between you and your God. You see what I say? You say your sins have separated mm -hmm between you and your God. Somebody had to remove this sin. The blood of bulls and goats couldn't do it, so somebody had to do it. Continue to read, brother, what it say? And your sins have hid his face from you, and he will not hear. Go ahead. For your hands are defiled with blood, and your fingers with iniquity. Mm -hmm. Your lips have spoken lies. Your tongue have mur uh, murdered perverseness. Go ahead and read. None call it for justice, nor any pleading for truth. Thy truth in vanity and speak lies. Thy trust in vanity and speak lies. Mm -hmm. They conceive mischief and bring forth iniquity. You see what it said? None call us for justice. None plead for the truth. They trust in vanity. And that is what's going on today. Skip down, Brother Marty, to verse 12 and read that. What does it say? For our transgressions are multiplied before thee. See, go ahead. And our, and our sins testify against us. For our transgressions are with us. As for our iniquities, we know them in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God, speaking uh -huh. oppressors, oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering from the heart words of falsehood. It's getting worse and worse. Go ahead and read. And judgment is turned away backward 
and justice stand at the fall, for truth is falling in the streets and equity cannot hear. Go ahead. And can I enter? I'm sorry. Can I enter, brother? Uh-huh. Yea, truth faileth. And he that is departed from evil, making himself a prey. Go ahead. And the Lord saw it, and it displeased him, and there was no oh, judge. Me. Read one more. And he saw that there was no man and mm -hmm. wanted that there were no intercessors. Therefore, his arm brought salvation unto him and his righteousness is sustained him. Y'all see that? It's, it said his arm. Jesus is the arm of the Lord. But That's he said right. there was no man and he wondered that there was no in intercessor. So the father had to send him. Let's look mm -hmm. at it again. Let's go to Ezekiel chapter 22. Ezekiel right, chapter brother. 22. And we're going to pick it up at verse 8. You you feel me, Julius? Ezekiel. I'm here, brother. I'm, I'm with you. In verse 8, 22 and 8. Because the Lord had to send somebody. He couldn't find nobody. That's what he just said. So now he got to find somebody, see if we can find somebody that'll stand in the gap. Verse verse uh, 8, what does it say, brother? Thou hast despised mine holy things and hast profaned my Sabbaths. In Go thee. Ahead. In thee are men that carry tails to shed blood, mm -hmm. and in thee they eat up on the mountains. In the midst of thee, they commit lewdness. Go ahead. In thee, they have they discovered thy father's nakedness. In thee uh -huh. have they humbled her that was set apart for pollution. Go ahead, brother. And one has committed abomination with his neighbor's wife. You see how it's worse and worse. Go ahead and read. And another has lewdly defied his daughter-in-law. And another in thee have humbled his sister, his father's daughter. Skip down to verse 29 and read that, my brother. What does it say? The people of the land have used oppression and exercised robbery and mm -hmm. have vexed the poor and needy. Yeah, they have oppressed the stranger wrongfully. Are we still oppressing the stranger wrongfully? That's because right. we once that stranger take on the God of Israel and is circumcised and baptized, he is part of the commonwealth. Read yes, one sir. more, Jesus. What does it say? And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge. You see, and he sought for a man that's going to make up the hedges. What else does it say? And stand in the gap before me for the land, that Go I ahead. should not destroy it, but I found none. But he found one later on down the road, and that one was Jesus. Let's move on. Let's go to Leviticus, the fourth chapter. Because sin, uh, because of sin, the Lord gave us animal sacrifice as yes. a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Yes. Now that's, that's right. This example, Leviticus chapter four, we're going to pick it up at verse one. When you get it, Brother Marty, just go ahead and read. Let me say it again. Leviticus chapter four. And we're going to pick this up at verse one. Leviticus, because this is a great example. The people are talking about you not under the law. I hope there are some preachers watching this so they can understand. Pay attention to what he's going to read. Because once you break the commandment, you had to do this animal sacrifice. That's right. And that is the law. This animal sacrifice is the one we're not under no more. But That's pay right. attention. Because this is where sin is the transgression of the law came from. Pick it up at verse 1. What does it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speaking to the children of Israel, saying, if a soul shall sin through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord concerning things which ought not to be done. See, the commandment do... of the Lord, hold on. The commandment of the Lord is your covenant. The That's right. Say the covenant is the Ten Commandments. Yes. So if a soul sin by accident through ignorance against any of the commandments of the Lord. If you can sin against the commandments, then the law is still good, ain't it? That is right. right. It That's is right. still good because you sinned against. Sin is the transgression of the what? The law, brother. The law. The law. So That's right. this, this is how the animal sacrifice was brought in. When you broke the commandment, you had to do something to absolve you of that sin. Continue That's to right. read, brother. What else to say? Concerning things which ought not to be done and uh -huh. shall do against any of them. Go ahead. If the priest that is anointed do sin according to the sin of the people, then let him bring forth for his sin which he has sinned, a young bullock without blemish, unto the Lord for a sin offering. So this priest here, this high priest, he represented Jesus. This bullock is a sin offering. He represented Jesus. Read on some more, brother. And he shall bring the bullock unto the door of the congregation before the Lord. And he shall lay his hand upon the bullock's head 
and kill the bullock before the Lord. Now notice it said he, that's the priest. He gonna bring this bullock to the door of the tab of the tabernacle of the congregation. Not go inside, he's gonna bring him to the door. And what else did it say, brother? And the priest that is anointed should take of the bullock's blood and bring it to the tabernacle of the congregation. See, this blood right here represents the blood of Jesus, you see? So he gonna take this blood, and what else he gonna do? Verse six, what did it say? And the priest shall dip his finger in the blood and sprinkle of the blood seven times before the Lord, before the veil of the sanctuary. So that blood represents the blood of the lamb. You see what I'm saying? Yes. He's gonna sprinkle that blood seven times. And that represents the seven days or the 7,000 years God gave this man to put himself under the Passover. And That's I'm gonna right, tell you, right. once Jesus returned, you still gonna take the Passover. That's Skip right. Down, Brother Marty, to verse 12 and read that. What does 12 say? Even the whole bullock shell he carried forth without the camp into a clean place where the ashes are poured out and burned him on the wood with fire. Uh -huh. Where the ashes are poured out, shall he be burnt. Uh huh. Go, and now skip down to verse because he's going to take him without the camp. Jesus was killed outside the camp. So we all this is pointing to as a forerunner to our Lord. Skip down to verse uh, 20 and read that. What does it say? And he said, do with the bullock as he did with the bullock for a sin offering. Uh -huh. And he said, do with this. And the priest shall make an atonement for them, and it shall be forgiven them. You see how this worked out? The priest, gonna, which is Jesus, going to make an atonement by dying and shedding his blood for you. And then it says, and, and they shall be forgiven. All this was planned by God in the beginning. He called the end from the beginning. Nobody is reading the beginning. That's why they don't understand what's happening in the end. Leviticus 17, Leviticus 17, Brother Julius. Leviticus 17, I want you to read one verse. I'm going to let the people get caught up, and we're going to read one verse. Leviticus chapter 17, because this is why people cry the blood of Jesus, the blood. They don't even understand how important this blood is, but they're going to understand after Julius read this verse. Leviticus 17, Julius, and you're going to read... Uh, verse 11. Leviticus 17, and we're going to read verse 11, because I'm tired of that. Oh, the blood of Jesus, I'm coming under the blood, but you don't do nothing the Lord said. Right, right. You, right. Agreement. You, haven't, you haven't agreed to keep the covenant. So now how how is the blood, you under the blood? I always wondered that. But let's see what this blood is about. Verse 11, Julius, what it say? For the life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you up on the altar to make an atonement for your souls. I'm making an atonement for who? For your souls. Oh. For your soul. The blood was to make an atonement for your soul. Go ahead and read. For it is the blood that making an atonement for the soul. It is the blood that makes the atonement. That's why at the Passover, they took the blood and put it on the doorpost and on the lintel. Because that represented you are under the blood of the lamb. But ain't nobody paying attention because they think they, they think they got this down. You got these men that really don't believe in Jesus. That's why they're giving you uh, communion this and communion that. Marty, uh, uh, Hebrews uh, chapter 9. You know, right. communion this on the first Sunday, on the fourth Sunday. That is an embarrassment. Brother Gray. Yes, sir. I thought, the, I thought the word communion means to communicate. Or to commune. You know, like I'm hanging with you. I'm communing with you. Yeah, you see right. what I'm saying? But they have taken something so precious and, 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 and made it into something else. See, yeah, Satan right. deceived. The book says Satan was going to deceive the whole world. Ain't that what the, the book says? The whole world. That's what it says, brother. So that is what he's done. He's taken you away from the truth and brought his own truth. And the people just follow this, this devil's doctrine from the time of the Protestant Reformation even to today. They are yes, following Jesus. I mean, they're following Satan and not knowing that they're following Satan. Hebrews 9 and 22. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9. We're going to read one verse here, verse 22, because you got to have this blood. Verse 22, brothers, what does it say? And almost all things are by the law purged with blood. Uh huh. And without shedding of blood is no remission. So your sin can't be forgiven. Blood had to be shed. A man sinned, a man had to remove sin. So right. that's what the father sent Jesus to do. Let's go over the numbers, Julius. Let's go over the numbers. 
Let's go over to Numbers and we're going to pick it up at verse Numbers 15 and 15. Because God, God didn't exclude nobody. He is the God of all men. He made the white man, the Chinese man, the Mexican. He, he made us all. That's but right. Israel and the focal point, because Israel has to teach the rest of the sons and daughters of Adam how to live according to the truth. And that's the problem today. Nobody is listening to Israel. Because Israel's out there with combat boots on, cussing people, throw, fighting out there in the street. We are not preaching the gospel. 15 and ver verse 15. We're going to start with verse 15, Jews. Uh, numbers 15 and verse 15. What does it say, brother? One ordinance shall be both for you of the congregation and also for the stranger that sojourneth with you. Mm -hmm. And ordinance forever in your generations. As you are, so shall the stranger be before the Lord. Don't that tell you that the stranger is supposed to keep the Passover too? Everything. He's supposed to keep Everybody. all the laws. One law for all. One ordinance to both the, the congregation and the stranger that so join with you. Skip down to verse 27, Julius, and read that. Look what the Lord going to say here. What does it say? And if any soul sin through ignorance, then he shall bring a, a she-goat of the first year for a sin offering. Always this goat was without blemish. You know, it ain't got no blemish. Read on. Read some more. And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinned ignorantly. When he yeah, sinned by the soul, ignorance. Now the soul sinned out of ignorance. That's right. Then the priest, notice if the soul sinned willfully on purpose, he don't get the chance to do no offering. You notice that? I'm going right? to show you that if you keep reading. Read, read 28 again, my brother. What does it say? And the priest shall make an atonement for the soul that sinned ignorantly. Mm -hmm. When he sinned by ignorance before the Lord to make an atonement for him, and it shall be forgiven him. And it's going to be forgiven him if he did it out of ignorance. Read on, brother Julius. You shall have one law for him that sinned through ignorance, both for him that is born among the children of Israel and for the stranger that sojourneth among them. Because that stranger is a part of the commonwealth. He's always been with the church. Read on, brother. What does it say? Verse 30. But the soul that doeth all presumptuously, whether now, he hold be born. Hold it, hold it. Presumptuously is willful. Yes. That's what presumptuous means. So yes. now if the son do it, the soul do it on purpose or the person, what does it say? Whether he be born in the land or a stranger, the same reproaches the Lord. And that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Tell him why, Julius. Because he had despised the word of the Lord and had provoked his commandment, that soul shall utterly be cut off. His iniquity shall be upon him. Still sound like we under the law, don't we? Still yes, sound sir. like we under the Ten Commandments, don't we? Because this is the law. The commandments is the agreement that we made. When Abraham, God made the covenant with Abraham, he told Abraham, you keep this covenant and I'll give you the land and I'll be your God. That yes. is the agreement. The circumcision is a token of the covenant. The covenant. Yes. Everybody got it. Every male has to be circumcised. Yes. I don't know who they are and what they look like. Because if you want God to be your God, you have to partake in this. And you've got to partake in the Passover too. Choir is this kept. Let's go to Hebrews, the 10th chapter. Mm -hmm. Hebrews 10. That's right. Teach, Brother Greg. Hebrews 10. Because I'm, you know, why are you talking about not keeping up? You aren't, you're not under the law when everything depends on the law. Yes. Who you going to call? Somebody breaking in your house, but you're not going to call the cops. <laughs> you're going to call your pastor. What you, what you, <laughs> you understand? The law is good. The book tell you it is good. Hebrews 10 and 1. Hebrews 10 and 1. This is this animal sacrifice mm -hmm. that the Lord is going to remove. 10 and 1. What does it say? For the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of the things can never, with those sacrifices which were, they offer year by year continually, make the comers there unto perfect. It couldn't do nothing for you. It didn't even do nothing for your mind. It's, it's, it said, which never, with those sacrifices which are offered year by year continually could make you perfect. See, that was a forerunner until Jesus could get here. That's and, right. Until he can get here and die for the sins of the people. Skip down to verse 4 and read verse 4 for me, brother. What does it say? For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats should take away sin. Go ahead. 
Wherefore, when he coming into the world, he says, sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. Mm -hmm. But a body has thou prepared me. So the Lord sent him. Skip down to verse 9, brother. Verse 9. And look what the Lord said. Some people don't believe this, but look what he said. Go ahead and read. Then said he, lo, I come to do thy will, O God. Yes. He taketh away the first, yes. that, he might, that he may establish the second. So he put the Levitical priesthood on the shelf. And he took the animal sacrifice off the table because yes, right. the real offering has come. He he said, "What did he say? He said uh, he said he took away the first that he may establish the second. The second. That's first right. ten, What does it say? By the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. Because he was your Passover." That was the offering to God, but the blood is what made the atonement. Skip down yeah. to verse 12 and read verse 12. What does it say? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God. Read that some. So this is what he did for us, if you believe. Julius, were you, you going to say something? What I'm just, say? The only thing I'm saying, Brother Greg, is I thank God for him sharing this blood for us. Amen. Amen. Me too. That's why I'm doing this lesson as a testimony to it. St. John chapter 3. And we're going to pick it up at verse 16. See, the Lord sent Jesus. And they made an Sorry. agreement. They took sweet counsel. They made an agreement to, for him to come and die for the sins of the people. When I was in the Sunday church, they didn't teach me that. I didn't know that. You know, all I know is Jesus, Jesus, Jesus love, Jesus this here and that there. He loved everybody. But once I started reading, it didn't look like he loved everybody. Right. He was, tearing, he was tearing brothers' heads off. Verse verse 16. John 3 and verse righteously too. Verse 3 and verse 16. What does it say, brother Julius? For God so loved the world uh -huh. that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Ain't that some? So we are St. John 3, and he just read verse 16. Read that verse again for me, brother. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Go ahead, Julius. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Ain't that some? He is the Passover lamb. Yes, if you put right. yourself under the blood, you're gonna be saved, but you got to walk in the commandments. Okay, okay, bro Marty. We're gonna go back to chapter one. John, back up to chapter one. Tonight, you brothers, brother, you are yes. listening to the Passover. This is the Passover. This is what you should be learning in your churches. The Passover brought to you by Brother Greg. And brought to you by the bomb of Gilead, the greatest radio show in the history of mankind. We're going to read verse 29. Verse 29, St. John 1 and verse But I believe in the show. I watch the show. I don't just teach on the show. I watch the show. Praise so Lord. I know you cover topics that the world needs to hear. Praise and that's Lord. why I'm saying what I'm saying. Verse 29, what does it say? The next day, John see Jesus coming unto him yes. and said, Behold, the Lamb of God would take it away the sin of the world. It's all encompassed. You know, the Passover, he going to pass over your sins. They recognized him. The people don't recognize him today for some strange reason. Let's go to Isaiah, the 53rd chapter. Isaiah 53. Man. See, the people don't recognize him now for some reason. They think he's some powder puff. Then they change his color. You know, some dude said Jesus had on Air Jordans. How did Jesus get Air Jordans? <laughs> What? Yeah, what? man. They, they, they preach all kind of nonsense. What? You know, I guess to get the people all worked up in the shouting and running through the church. Ain't that some straight foolishness? Straight yeah, foolishness. Andrew, Andrew and Sandals, huh, Brother Greg? They, they had to be. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they, they had to be. Because, because if they really wanted to know the truth and understand what Jesus did for them, they would tune in to the bomb of Gilead. That's what they would do. So Isaiah 53 and 2. Isaiah 53 and 2. Because they, because I started to, you know what? I'm going to read verse 1. It said, who, who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? Nobody as a whole. Because they don't believe the truth. Continue to read verse 2. What does it say? 
for he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of a dry ground. He has no form nor commonness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He didn't come as no pretty boy, you know what I mean? Like 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 Denzel Washington, you know, or look like you, Jews. He didn't come looking all pretty. <laughs> <laughs> you know what he, he said he has no beauty that we should desire him. Verse three, what does it say? He is despised and rejected of men. Hold on, Jews, man. hold it together, Jews, hold it together. Go ahead. <laughs> he, he is despised and rejected of men, a Go man ahead. of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as if it were our faces from him. Mm -hmm. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Continue, brother. Surely he has borne our griefs and yes. carried our yes. sorrows. Yes. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. See, for him to come and die, the Lord put him through the paces. The Lord did that to him. He smote him to see if he was going to be able to deal with the pressures that he was under. See, he had to die. He was even, even though he was in this flesh. The book said he had all the infirmities of man. So everything, you know, if he got cut, it hurt him. If he got somebody cussed him out, it, it hurt his feelings. So, but he did the job that he was assigned to do. Continue yes. to read, Julius, verse five. But, what is but he was wounded for our transgressions. Yes. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. Go ahead, brother. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. We are turning everyone to his own way. And I see it today, Greg. And the Lord yes, has do. laid on him the iniquity of us all. See, all the sins of the people is laid on him. That's like when you get baptized. See, all this is encompassed when you get baptized. That, oh, you, you repent the night before, and then you should be repenting all your life. But you repent the night before, and you leave that old you in that water. And when you come up that new you, coming up as a new creature. See, all of this is tied to the Passover. Yes. Because you must be passed, I mean, you must be baptized and the Lord must pass over your sins. So you must be put under that blood. Verse 7, what does this say, brother? He was oppressed and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. Uh -huh. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter and as, a sheep, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. He was brought as a lamb to the slaughter. Because he was the Lamb of God. Skip down to verse 10 and read that for me, and we're gonna move on. What does it say? Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. Again, the Lord did this to him, Julius. The Lord smote him, and it pleased the Father to bruise him. Go ahead. He has put him to grief when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin. Mm -hmm. He shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days, and Go the ahead. pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. Ain't that something? He gonna, he was a sin offering. That is how our sins are forgiven. That's how he's going to pass over your sin. Exodus 12. Exodus 12. And we're going to pick this up at verse at verse 1. Now in Exodus 12, you ain't going to read nothing about this is a feast of the Jews and this is the feast of the Jews. You know, whoever said that should should have been chastised. These, those, those are the Jews' feasts. Those are the feasts. Yes, sir. Just reading that Isaiah 53rd chapter and looking at that background behind you, it, it just gives me chills. It gives me chills. It is so fitting. This yes. lesson is so fitting. Sister, brothers, please like, share, and post. I I'm sorry, brother. Go ahead. That's all right. The Passover, is to the Passover service is tomorrow mm -hmm. night. Everybody right. tune in because you're going to get a treat tomorrow night. Exodus 12. In verse 1, 12 and 1, what does it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This what? month shall be unto you the beginnings of months, and it shall be at the beginning of the month of the year to you. Continue. Speak unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month shall they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. Go ahead and read. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of the souls. Every man according to his eating shall make your account for the lamb. So you take the lamb up on the tenth day. The day of atonement is the tenth day of the seven months. You see how the, how the Passover and the day of atonement is connected. Then he said, every soul 
He said, every right. man according to his eating. Verse 5. What does it say, brother? Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. You shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. So this points to Jesus as well. He's the lamb of God. He had no sin. And he was the first born male of his mother. Continue to read. And you should keep it up until the 14th day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. Now the whole assembly. So when when they were dealing with, with Pilate and Herod and all them, Israel put put uh, Pilate and them of them Romans up to killing it. Because they wanted, they even wanted to get a, a criminal release and, and get them to take Jesus. That's right. It's just they did. And they knew he was the Lamb of God. That's Continue right. On, verse 7. Now look what else he's going to say. Well, go ahead and read. And they should take up the blood and strike it on the two side posts, on the upper door post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. So on the two sides of the door and on the top, because that represents you are covered under the blood if you believe. Verse 13, what does it say? And the blood shall be unto you for a token upon the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I will pass over you. And the plague shall not be upon you to destroy you when I smite the land of Egypt. See, that's, that's letting you know if you don't have the blood covered, you're going to end up in the lake of fire. you got that's to right. come to the blood because the death angel is the destroyer and he's coming through. The Lord used all kind of metaphors and examples to show you that if you're not under this blood, you're going to get cut off. Skip back to verse 8. Read verse 8 for me, brother. What does it say? And they shall eat the flesh in that night, roast with fire and unleavened bread. And with bitter herbs shall they eat it. See, back then, this was a feast. They had the That's feast right. of the Passover. So That's right. you ate it with unleavened bread. Skip the skip back to verse 11 and read. Let's read what it's called. Verse 11. Go ahead and read. And thus shall you eat it with all your loins girt, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand. You shall eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. What is it yeah. called, y'all? The Lord's, the Lord's Passover. Passover. His, not the Jews. Not, not the Jews. Not, man, not, not Esau. You know, because they when they do the Passover, they get a shank bone and an egg and some herb. <laughs> what, what is that? I, I, didn't, I didn't read nothing about no shank bone, did you? Nowhere, brother. Nowhere. You know what I'm saying? The whole lamb. The whole lamb. Now they're gonna and then you had to roast it. Oh, you couldn't even cut the That's thing. right. You see what I'm That's saying? Right. Verse 14. Read verse 14 because you do this. This is how I know you do it every year on the 14th day of the first month. Read verse 14. What does it say? And this day should be unto you for a memorial, and you should keep it at, keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. Uh -huh. You shall eat it a feast by an ordinance forever. You can say, you say, you shall keep, keep it, it a feast. That's what I'm sorry, ordinance. brother. That's all right. By mm -hmm. ordinance forever. Because That's it's right. a memorial. Whenever he give you a date, that means you do it on that date every year. It that's right. The, the 14th day of the first month, that is what that's when you're supposed to keep the Passover. And that is the date he died for you. So you keep you, you people out there in TV land, if you don't remember nothing, I mean on radio land, you don't remember nothing, write that date down on the 14th day 14th of day. the first month. Mm -hmm. Now keep it tomorrow so you know that we ain't talking about January the 14th. Come on, y'all. <laughs> Let's skip over to verse 43, verse 43. And notice, it says this is the beginning of the month to you. Didn't he say that? That's right. In the springtime, everything comes back to life. See, the Lord show you the death and the resurrection all the time. In the wintertime, everything dies. In the summer, I mean, in the spring, it comes back to life. He Powerful, speaks brother. through nature about the death and the resurrection. That's powerful. Y'all yes, see sir. that? So now... Verse 43, what does it say? And the Lord said unto Moses and Aaron, this is the ordinance of the Passover. Mm -hmm. There shall no stranger eat thereof. See, he's talking about a non-believer. That's a, uh, no stranger. I'm going to show you that he's talking about uh, uh, the non-believer there because you got strangers that believe. Uh, continue to read, brother. What does it say? But every man's servant that is bought for money, when thou hast circumcised him, he shall eat uh, uh, thereof. See, is foreigner slave. His own, his own people. So that's how I know he, it, it, it says every man's servant that's bought, he's purchased by the blood. That's right. When he has circumcised him, he shall eat thereof. Because right. you got you got to make the agreement with God. Skip down to verse 47 and read that. What does it say, brother? 
all the congregation of Israel should keep it. Go ahead. And when a stranger shall sojourn with thee, and will keep the Passover to the Lord, let all his males be circumcised, uh -huh. and then let him come near and keep it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And he sh and he shall be as one that is born in the land, for the no uncircumcised person shall eat thereof. Notice what he said. No, he didn't say no uncircumcised stranger there, and that one. He said no uncircumcised person. That's if right. I to, to Leviticus twelve, right. I could have read that Israel had to be circumcised when he's eight days old. So That's it wasn't right. a problem with Israel before he could even uh, 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 think clearly. He got clipped. So the stranger had to understand this. Verse 49, what does it say? One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that sojourneth among you. See, we done read that two, three times. Because the stranger that sojourned or that's a part of the congregation, he got to do whatever we do. He can't, he can't slip out of the noose. And say, well, I ain't got to do that part. Uh-uh. You right. got to do, you got to make that agreement with God as well. Okay, Julius, Matthew 26. Now, let's go look at the Lord changing the ordinance because he said, by ordinance forever. Didn't he say that? Yes, sir. Right. Do this by ordinance. Matthew chapter 26. Because Jesus is going to change the ordinance. Remember, it was a feast back then, but now it's not a feast. We do the bread and the wine. Remember, he said, eat my flesh, right. drink my blood, because that represents the word of God. You are drinking from the, the well of the Lord. You are, you are taking in what he said, because when you drink something, it goes inside you. When you eat something, it goes inside you. That's right. why it says, brothers, like you brothers out here and all the brothers in the class, y'all feel with the spirit if you're doing right, because you're right. eating the word. So that's what the law was talking about. Pick it up at verse one, brother Jews. Read one and two, and then we're going to skip to 17. What does it say, brother? And it came to pass, when Jesus had finished all these things, he said to his disciples, you know that after two days is the feast of the Passover. Uh huh. And the Son of Man is betrayed to be crucified. Ain't that some? So now, skip down to verse 17 and read that. What does it say? Now, the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, the, the disciples came to Jesus saying unto him, where wilt thou that we prepare for thee to eat the Passover? Go ahead. And he said, go into the city to such a man and say unto him, the master said, my time is at hand. I will keep the Passover at thy house with my disciples. Go ahead and read, brother. And the disciples did as Jesus had appointed them, and they made ready the Passover. Go ahead. One more. Now, now, when the evening was come, he sat down with the twelve. And as they oh, did, that's he good. That's good. that's good. Skip down to 26. You can read it because my time is getting away from me. Verse 26. What does it say? And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat. This is my body. Go ahead and, and read. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, uh -huh. which is shed for many for the remission of sins. Ain't that something? So now let's move on. Julius, I want you to continue to read because I got I to gotta make my time up. We're going to go to Genesis 17. We're going to pick it up at verse 1 because I want to show you this ordinance. I want to show you uh, uh, the covenant that God made with Abraham. Because you must be circumcised. Ain't that what he said about the stranger? He said you must, he must be circumcised. He said no uncircumcised stranger shall eat thereof. Pick it up, Jewish, at verse, I read one and two, skip to five. What does it say? And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Go ahead and read. I will make my covenant between me and thee, and will multiply thee exceedingly. Verse 5, what does it say? Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. Give down to verse 7 and read that. What does it say? And I will establish my covenant between me and thee and thy seed after thee and their generations for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. Skip down to verse uh, 10 and read that. What does it say? This is my covenant, which you shall keep between me and you and thy seed after thee. 
Go every ahead. man child among you shall be circumcised. What does every mean? Everybody. Everybody. Every, brother. Go ahead and read. Everybody. And Go. you shall circumcise the flesh of your foreskin. It and it shall be a token of the covenant between me and you. See, a token is a sign. That, it's, a, it's a sign. Go ahead and read. And he that is eight days old shall be circumcised among you. Every man child in your generation. He, he said that, it again. He said it again. Every man child. Go ahead and read. He that is born in the house or bought with money of any stranger, which is not of thy seed. He that is born in thy house and he that is brought with thy money must needs be circumcised. Go ahead. Go and ahead. my covenant shall he shall be in your flesh for an everlasting covenant. Let's go to Leviticus 23. Leviticus, the 23rd chapter. Let's go there. We're going to pick it up at verse 9 because what I want to show you that this, this Pentecost or this feast of the first fruits, it is showing you the same thing. The yes. offering had to be made to God. You couldn't eat. I mean, they this was a uh this was a harvest feast. So this offering had to be made to God, but you couldn't eat anything until that sheep was waved before the Lord. That Pick it up right. in verse 9. What does it say? And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel and say unto them, When you be coming to the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof. Then ye shall bring a sheep of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. Go ahead. And he shall wave the sheep before the Lord to be accepted for you. for you. You notice again, accepted for you. Go ahead and read. On the morrow, after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. Go ahead and read. And you shall offer that day when you shall wave the sheep a he lamb without blemish for of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Always without blemish, always without sin. The sheep had to be way before the Father to be accepted for you. All this pointed to Jesus. Read verse 14 for me. I'm throwing that in. Verse 14, what does it say? I turned away from it, brother. I'm so sorry. Verse 14. And you shall eat neither bread, Go ahead. nor parched corn, nor green ears until the same self day that you have brought an offering unto the Lord. It shall be a statue for Ever throughout your generations so and you all your dwellings. An offering unto God. So now let's go right. to uh this is all about the Lord because that's why he told his sister don't touch him. John chapter 20, St. John chapter 20. That's why the sister couldn't touch him because he had that blood had to be accepted. So the Lord is showing you in the old and he's showing you in the new. Why is it that nobody understands this in this in this Sunday church world? We're going to pick right. this up at verse 1. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. You're going to read 1 and 2, Julius, and you're going to skip to 11. 1 and 2 and 11. Chapter 20, what does it say? The first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, unto the sepulcher, and see if the stone taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said unto them, they have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we know not where they have laid him. Skip down to verse, uh, skip, skip down to verse 11 and read that. What does it say? But Mary stood outside at the sepulcher, weeping. And as she went, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher. Mm -hmm. And see two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. Now, I want you to skip to 16 for the time's sake. Read verse 16. What, I mean, uh, verse 15, what does it say? Jesus said unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, said unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. Go ahead and read. Jesus said unto her, Mary. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, Master. Go ahead. Jesus said unto her, Touch me not. For I am not yet ascended to my father. Didn't, didn't, to we my... Read, didn't we read in in uh, under the Pentecost scripture or the first fruits that you couldn't eat a potch corn, you couldn't eat nothing until that way that way sheep was way before. Be ready, brother. So that's why I said he told her, "Don't touch me, for I am not ascended to my father." Finish that, Julius. But go to my brethren and say unto them, "I ascended to my father and your father and to my God and your God." Marty, Joshua, 5 and 10. Julius, after that, I want you to go to 2 Chronicles 35. Uh, uh, Joshua, we're going to read one verse. Chapter 5 
And you're going to pick it up at verse 10, Brother Marty. What does the scripture say? Man, I wasn't ready for you. That's Gray. all right. That's all right. That's all right. We gonna, we take, gonna, a, take a time, Gray. We're going to get through this, brother. Okay. But look here. They said an hour. I'm due out. That's it. That's what five and ten? Yeah, five and ten. All right, brother. We're going to get through this. We don't want to rush the people either. We want to get no, it right. No, we don't want to rush them, but, you know, the rules is the rules. Five and ten. That's all. What it say? And the, and the children of Israel are kept in the Gilgal. And kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month at the even in the plains of Jericho. Ain't that some okay, Jude, That's right. Second Chronicles, Marty, you go to Ezra six, Julius Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-five. Pick it up at verse one. Second Chronicles, chapter thirty-five, and I'm gonna wait a little bit. Chapter thirty-five, so the brother told me to slow down. Chapter thirty-five. <laughs> if we go, if we go a couple minutes, brother, it it, it it'll be beneficial to the people. Okay. Let's make sure they understand this. Instead it's of rushing. Sweet in the mouth and bitter in the belly, but hey, we're going to right. deal with it. Uh, uh, Second Chronicles chapter uh, uh, 35, we're going to pick it up at verse 1. He's going to skip to 17. What does it say, brother? Moreover, Josiah kept a Passover unto the Lord in Jerusalem. Uh huh. And they killed the Passover on the 14th day of the first month. Now, skip down to verse 17 and read that for me, brother. And the children of Israel that were present kept the Passover at that time, and the Feast of Unleavened Bread seven days. Go ahead, one more. And there was no Passover like to that kept in Israel from the days of Samuel the prophet, neither did all the kings of Israel keep such a Passover as Josiah kept. Mm -hmm. Man. And the priests okay. and the Levites and all Judah and Israel that were present and the present and the inhabitants of Jerusalem. All right, uh, uh, Marty Ezra chapter six. I want you to read one verse, verse nineteen, because I'm showing them that the Passover was kept from generation to generation. Yes, what is the crap That's that right. they're talking about in the what? What? How did you get Easter out of this? What does rabbits and eggs got to do with anything? No, not not a That's thing. Right. 6 and 19, what does it say? And the children of the captivity kept the Passover upon the 14th day of the first month. Ain't that some? Everybody kept the Passover, but these Sunday preachers that came out of the Catholic Church. Julius Luke chapter 2, verse 40. Julius. See, I'm trying to show you everybody done this. Luke chapter 2. Pick it up at verse 40. I want you to read 40 through 42. Because Jesus being a shorty, him and his whole family. They said shorty. <laughs> chapter 2 and verse 40. Chapter 2 and verse 40. What does it say? And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. Yes. And the grace of God was upon him. Go ahead, read. Now, now his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. At the feast so, of what? At the, the Passover. Passover. Read one more. Hey, Greg. Yes, sir. Every year, every year, at the it's... feast of the Passover, once every, a year, once at the appointed time. Yes, sir, because they've been doing that for generations. Continue to read. I mean, did you finish 42? No, I'm, I'm at 42 now. Okay, read that for me. And when he was 12 years old, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Let's go. Let's go, Marty. First John, chapter 2. First John chapter two, you're going to read one verse. Reason I'm reading this, I'm showing you that we got to follow in the Lord's steps. Whatever he did, that's what we supposed to do. Yes, sir. Give you my example. Right. So now I want you to read verse six. First John chapter two and verse six. What does it say, brother, if you got it? He just said he abided in him all, himself also to walk, even as he walked. You say you down with Jesus? You say you abide with him? Then you supposed to do what he did. That's right. That's right. Walk the way he walked. Now, I want you to, I want you, uh, uh, Marty, I want you to read Ezekiel 45 and 21. Now, this is in the millennium. This is when the Lord returned. Let's see what we going what we going to do then. That's right. Ezekiel 45 and 21. Ezekiel 45 and verse 21. What is, what is, what does the book say? What does it say? Go ahead. In the first month. In the 14th day of the month, 
you shall have a Passover, a feast of seven days, and leavened bread shall be eaten. Ain't that something? So now if you go back to the 43rd chapter, you can see the Lord coming by way of the east. He's going to go into the temple. So now right. he's still keeping the Passover. You know, did you finish that verse? That's right. Yes, we okay. did. Now, Julius, I want you to go to Leviticus 23 and read verses 4 and 5. I want you to read that for me. Leviticus 23 and verses 4 and 5. What does it say when you get it? These are the feasts of the Lord. The feast of who? The feast of the Lord, brother. The feast of who? These are the feasts of the Lord. Go ahead and read. Even holy convocations. So we're we supposed feast. to gather. We're supposed to gather for the feast of the Lord, right? Yes, sir. Even That's right. Holy convocation. That means we are to gather for this. Go ahead and read. Even holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their seasons. On the 14th day of the first month. That is the season for this feast or this Passover, right? In the 14th day brother? of the first month at evening is the Lord's Passover. It's the Lord's Passover. Now, let's go to first. I'm going to finish this. We're going we gonna to end it here at, at uh, 1 Corinthians 11. 1 Corinthians 11. Because this is an argument I heard and I saw, and I always get this argument. You know, the book say do it often. But we just read you do it on the 14th day of the first month in a season. Did we read that? That's right. That's right, brother. So now, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, because they try to they try to be slick. Oh, oh, it say do it often. We're gonna see if it say do it often. We're gonna pick it up at verse one and two, read one and two, and then we're gonna skip to verse 23. One and two and verse 23. What it say? Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. So follow him, because he's following the Lord. Go ahead and read. Now, now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. And keep the ordinances. Why don't these Sunday preachers read that? Because they're trying to get you cut off because they are Satan's ministers. Skip down mm -hmm. to verse 23 and read that. Now check out what he said, though, because Paul wasn't there. So he said this was delivered to him. Go ahead and read. What it say? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, that same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Uh -huh. This do in remembrance of me. Go ahead and read, brother. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament. In my blood, uh -huh. this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So you do it on the 14th day of the first month. He didn't say do it often. He said as often as you do it. You do it once a year. That's Why right. do you do it taking communion on the first Sunday, Sunday or the fourth Sunday? It makes no sense. The people that fell in love with lies and they're going to get cut off for it. But verse 26, what does verse 26 say? For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, Go ahead. You, you do so the Lord's death till he come. You do. You're supposed to remember the Lord's death because he died for you one time. Brother Marty, I want yes. you to go just one more verse. 1 Corinthians 5, and I want you to read. Uh, that we're going we're gonna to point out this Passover, and I'm, and I'm done with this verse. I just got a question. I just got a question, Brother G-Man. I got a question. Let, a question. let him read this first. And then okay. we end it on that. On okay. that. First Corinthians 5 and 7. What does it say, Marty? First Corinthians 5 and 7. Purge out there for the old leaven. This may be a new lump. And ye all as ye are unleavened. Go ahead. For even Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. So who is the Passover, y'all? Jesus Christ. Jesus. And, and he died and his blood was offered to the Father as an atonement for your sins. Go That's ahead. Right. Go, go ahead, Judas. Man, I just want to ask, just the brothers, I just want to ask a question. How often do your birthday come around? Once a year. Once a year. Same thing as the Passover. 14th day in the first month, even at evening, that's the absence of the sun, is the Lord's Passover. Anything other than that, you have just gone to the left or gone to the right of the scriptures. 
Hey, Thank like you, like, right. like the commercial say, anything else is uncivilized. Ain't it? Uncivilized. Brother. So 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 now you take the Passover with matzah and bread and wine, and you make unleavened that unleavened bread. Tomorrow, unleavened bread, not regular bread, not Wonder Bread or that crazy bread you buy in the store. You you got to <laughs> get unleavened bread, matzah, and you take that Passover with us tomorrow evening, brothers and sisters. That's out there watching. And so, sister and brother, if you cannot find it, you can find it at Jewels, Food for Less, or, or those type of places, sister and brothers. Uh, but I, I urge you in advance to try to find these things before the Passover next year because it's always hard to find them because they get, a lot of times they get sold off. You wait to the last minute. So next year, sister and brother, you got to prepare for this. For all my newcomers, prepare and try to get it at least a week in advance yes. so you can have these things. Yes. And I went sister out to the produce. Mm -hmm. Let me say this. I went to Peace Produce. They had a ton of it on the shelf. So That's if you good. got the piece of produce out in Madison, they had a ton of it on the shelf. Go yes, ahead. They did. Hey, Brother Will. Brother Greg. Yes. I, I want to I want to thank Brother Greg for a wonderful lesson. And before we close out, Me too. I need Me to, too. I need to, to do this. Sisters and brothers, the end of the God presents virtual feast week. Again, virtual feast week. It is something to do every day for the uh, for the from the past uh, from the first day of feast of unleavened bread all the way to the seventh day, so you, we're gonna enjoy the Lord's feast. We're gonna be learning how to do things. Uh, bring that promotion up. Saturday, March twenty seventh, Brother Thin will be hosting the chill at ten thirty a.m. Central Standard Time. Brother Thin will be have will have children Bible study. He will be having a children Bible study March twenty seventh at ten thirty a.m. Central Time. Also, at 12, Saturday, March 27th at 12 Central Time, Passover. The, the Passover lesson will be given by our senior pastor, Brother Henry Bowie. And so we're going to enjoy the, 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 the Passover and the Sabbath with falls on the Sabbath with our senior pastor. That lesson will be brought to you by Brother Bowie. That is March 27th at 12 Central Stand, Standard Time. Saturday. Hey, so yes, we have to we gotta remind people that we will be taking the pass over with the elders, sisters and brothers, with the elders. We'll be taking the pass over virtually after yes. the lesson. We want you guys to get your bread and wine and sit down uh with the elders and we're gonna take the pass over. Yes, sir. Oh, Thank yes. you, Brother Will. Also, yes. also on the 27th at 9 p.m. Central Standard Time, Brother Thin and Brother ASAP will be hosting team talk with Brother Thin and Brother ASAP. Man, that will be at 9 p.m. So we got a full deck loaded for you. Thursday, April the 1st, sisters and brothers. Man, who is that, Will? Man. It's me and you, brother. Oh, man. Look like I had a little head in. Boy, they sure, they sure look familiar. <laughs> April, the, <laughs> April the 1st at 7.30 p.m. We're going to have a great time. That is 7.30 p.m. Central Time, April the 1st. Bible trivia. Instead of a lesson, we're going to have a Bible trivia with the Bob of Gilead. We're going to have some prizes, sisters and brothers. And again, and again, this is doing a virtual feast week. We got some cooking things coming up. It's going to be a blast. And we're going to enjoy the Lord's Passover. We're going to enjoy the Feast of Unleavened Bread. And we are going to celebrate our Passover and our uh, uh, uh that, that unleavened bread would represent, represent us being sin free, sisters yes. and brothers. Yes. Oh man, I'm already excited about it. Don't forget, brothers and sisters, remove all the leaven out of your house. Make sure you get all that leaven out. Get that That's bread right. out of there. Don't put it in your car. That's still your property. Yeah. yeah, don't put it in your car. Don't hide it in your garage. Don't, don't give it, take it, it to your no job. Put it in the locker. Just have don't faith give it to in nobody and cause them to sin. Yes, because you're supposed to eat unleavened bread. For seven days after the Passover. So now Man. on the 15th day to the uh, seven days, you're supposed to eat unleavened bread. Don't cheat now. Don't <laughs> so, cheat. But, but Greg, we want to point this out. A lot of our brothers and sisters, because they don't want to throw the bread away, they go and give it to the homeless. But sister, you're still causing them to sin. You have to throw that bread away. Because it's symbolic. It's symbolic of you removing the sin from your life. You don't you want to cause nobody else to sin. So, That's you know, right. it is it is really a blessing. And I told y'all, this is the greatest radio show for, for seven days. They're going to have something for you for seven days to commemorate the Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread. I told y'all, 
Watch the video show because everybody can learn something. Thank you, Brother Greg. And, and shout out to Pastor Johnson. They're going to be keeping that Passover. They're going to simulcast this live on the Sabbath day, uh, sisters and brothers. Always for full lot of them. And I'm sure that after this program, Pastor Johnson from Bethel House of God will be uh, giving us a short lesson on that. Uh, so you can tune into uh, Bethel House of God, Pastor Johnson. Go to YouTube and go on uh, Facebook and type in uh, Bethel House of God TV. And he will uh, do a follow-up thing. He's been doing this series. He's putting in the work, sisters and brothers. And thank you for all your comments, your likes, your shares, and your posts, your watch parties. Oh, my God. I see you, Brother Rob. We love you. See you, Sister Crystal Wells. And we're going to enjoy uh, uh, this. This is uh, uh, the Lord's. This is the, this what belonged to the Lord. And he gave it to us, Brother Greg. I know he did, June. Yeah, yeah, give all them shout outs to the people that's watching. I brother, did. Uh -oh. brother Gray, I want you to go back, Brother Gray. And I know if you have access, I know you don't have a Facebook page yourself, but if you have access to a Facebook page, I want you to go back and look at all these comments that the people have left left for you, brother, because they said it's a great lesson and they really appreciate you. They said you were on fire. They said Brother Gray was on fire. And, Praise uh, the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and, and we know it's all the Lord, and the Lord allows you to put this together. We, we are in these last days. So it is time to edify the people. We are. It is time to prepare the people for what's coming. So that's how I look at these lessons that y'all teach, that I teach, because we must get the people prepared for what is coming. And that's why these. That's why I love this radio show because that's exactly this bomb, this medicine is what the people need today. Oh, so thank, you, thank you, brother. Yes. Mark. And I'll be talking to you, Marty, as I do all week. Every day. Oh, every day, brother. I talk to, listen, sisters and brothers, I don't think it's a day to go past that I don't talk to Brother Julius, Brother Greg, Brother Andre Doak, Brother Andre in Baltimore, uh, all of my brothers. I try to reach out to each, each and every one of them at least once a week, Brother Jeremiah, Sean, uh -huh. all, all these brothers, Odot, all the brothers. I try to reach my brothers, Brother J.D., I try to reach these brothers because the books say iron shop and iron system, brothers. Yes. So you got to get yourself into a group of people that love to talk about the Lord and love to talk about this greatness of the Lord and love to talk about the things the Lord has done for us and this Passover. We've been, we've been pumping up this Passover for the whole week, sisters and brothers. And, and love to live the gospel. Live according to the commandments of God to the best of your ability. Yes. Well, sister, brother, we had so much fun tonight. We we hate to leave you guys. Yeah, we sure. Once do. again, we have to go, and we will have brother Gray back very soon, sister, brother. Y'all, hey, y'all so, gotta give me a two-hour jam one of these times so I can get. Okay, it brother, we can arrange a special lesson like that. That's okay. no problem. All right, no problem because we don't want to rush the lesson because we no. don't want to cheat the people. That's but right, sister, brother. We invite you out tomorrow night. Tune in with us. I'm going to see if we can. Uh, Share the uh, bomb, share the Israel of God on the bomb and Gilead page also, in case those have problems reaching to, to the bomb, uh, to the Israel of God. We can share from my page also, so you can go on. But we urge you guys to go on the Israel of God page and watch it. Go on the Israel of God page and watch it. Yes, I want to let the people know that the Israel of God got something going on practically every day. You yes. got to, you got to come on in my room, brother Mel and, and brother Mark. Yeah, Tuesday, Sound Doctrine Studios. Uh, 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 with Brother, Brother Daniel Daniel. Anderson from uh, IOG Baton Rouge, where's the night question and answer? Yes. You know, uh, 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 be it Atlanta or be it uh, be it Riverdale. Thursday, you got the bomb of Gilead. Friday, you got the Friday. Wait, night Judy, we got also Thursday, we got the Brothers in the Vineyard, brother. Before the Bomb Brothers Gilead, we got the Gilead. Brothers in the Vineyard. That's right. That's we got to we got to shout out the Brothers in the Vineyard, man, because the brothers are putting great work in over there. Brother Ray right. and Brother Jeremiah. And brother Ed Robinson. And brother Ed Robinson. That's right. And and, and and James Howe, the reader. That's right. I'm sorry about that. I, yes, yes, sir. Man. Friday and Fridays. Night, prayer service. You know, we have the prayer lesson. We have the Friday night prayer service lesson, and then uh, also we have uh, brother James Anderson again with "Let Us Reason Together," another outstanding show. And then Saturday we get the main. Course, yes, and that is the Sabbath lesson taught by Brother Bowie from on the the yes. And, and yes. on Sunday, sisters and brothers, we have launched a new pro, uh program with Cleveland. Me and Brother Julius and Brother Jared 
And brother and Wallace. And brother, and, and, and brother Stick here. The Phoenix in the house. What's the name? Yes, of, it, what's the name of that program? Stick to the scripts. All right. Uh, stick, okay, stick to the scripts is Phoenix, but on Sunday we do. That is uh, on Sunday. Just, Shout just out. Stick to the scripts. That's right. Shout That's out to the Phoenix. IOT Phoenix camp. That's right. So we love you. Close us out, Will. Sisters and brothers, as always, the scripture says, the Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. The Lord shall make my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Sisters and brothers, we ask the Lord keep you guys, special, especially during these times. The Lord protect you from this dreadful virus that's out here, sisters and brothers, and you protect yourselves, sisters and brothers. Follow the guidelines, sisters and brothers, wear that mask. And we ask that the Lord keep each and every one of us and we ask that the Lord forgive us for each and every one of us for our sins through this Passover, sisters and brothers. And let's do better next year. And so join us tomorrow night, 7.30 p.m. Uh, 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 standard time, 7 p.m., I'm sorry. For, Central time. For Central the, time. Central time for the Lord's Passover. Amen. That's right. Let's, let's continue to walk in the truth, sisters and brothers. And let's every day be a better day. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you, Brother Greg, thank you. Sister and brothers, thank you for joining us. Sister Jen and Brother Shaw, hit the music. Close us out. Yeah, Jeremiah 8, 20 through 22. The harvest is past. The summer has ended and we are not saved. For the hurt of the daughter of my people and my hurt, I am black. Astonishment have taken hold on me. Is there no bomb in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why then is not the health of the daughter of my people recovered? The bomb of Gilead, give me the remedy. Father, correct my path. The bomb of Gilead, you all that I ever need and all that I ever had. The bomb of Gilead, don't keep on healing me. Father, who's out my path? The bomb of Gilead, you all that we ever need and all that we ever had. There's drama in the streets and my people is dying. And I'm starting to lose sleep from all the grieving and crying. I don't trip because I believe it's kingdom design. The ambition shall be yours, you don't ever be lying. Unlike the false prophet and the reverend be lying. Talk about we going to heaven, not the earth when we dying. All how you coming back full of rage and violence. Opposition and these critics will forever be silent. While Satan and his henchmen start to lake a fire. And you can't have anything your heart desire. Without no consequences, you know Satan alive. You got you thinking we ain't got to keep the laws of the Bible. And he didn't have a bomb, now we Dead on arrival with a reprobate mind and we can't survive. I'm unable to get the false doctor from the side of I ain't never met a zombie till I stood beside him. The bomb of Gilead, give me the remedy. Father, correct my path. The bomb of Gilead, you all that I ever need and all that I ever had. The bomb of Gilead, don't keep on healing me. Father, who's out my back? The bomb of Gilead, you all that we ever need and all that we ever had.